first launch of ASDM here, I'll put in the IP address I configured in vCenter as well as my credentials. Got my first launch here. I'm going to uh, just clean up my panel here and uh, enable logging. Okay, and uh, let's get to configuring. So a uh, couple of things I'm going to do here first. Um, click on the config panel and I uh, want to configure my interfaces first. So I'll configure my outside, which I have plumbed as uh, gigabit zero here in the ASA. View. I have my uh, interfaces set up correctly here, and I'll just check on my routing, my static route setup. Okay, now let's set up our remote access. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, upload my AnyConnect images. So uh, come in here to remote access under AnyConnect client software, and I'm going to upload some images. And I'll upload the images I downloaded from Cisco.com uh, earlier. Next thing I'll do is configure my VPN pool. Okay, now to configure our identity certificates so our clients don't get errors when they connect to my ASA. So I'm going to install the wildcard certificate that uh, we got from Get Free SSL. And I like to name my trust points of when I got the certificate, uh, make it a little easier to remember when they expire. And after you uh, add additional ones, you may end up with several here. So I have the uh, PKCS12 file that I created. It's the certificate.pfx file. And that has uh, the certificate, the private key, and the certificate authority bundle from um, Let's Encrypt uh, all built into there. So uh, i got everything uh, set here, decrypt password, etc. And send that. That was imported successfully. And oh, by the way, if you did this right, uh, you will see not only do you have your certificate here, but if you go under your CA certs, you'll see you have the Let's Encrypt certificate that came from that trust point. Now, uh, another uh, best practice I want to do here, the, the ASA does support certificate authentication. And while we're not going to configure that today, uh, I want to be careful that if I ever do, uh, I don't trust all certificates coming from this Let's Encrypt certificate authority or the Cisco Smart Call Home Service. What I'll do is edit this certificate, and under advanced, I want to uncheck accept certificates you issued by this CA, and that's for authentication purposes. I'm going to go ahead and do that for both. Okay, and our certificates are now installed. And now I'll go and enable AnyConnect. And I'll enable it on the outside interface with IPv2. Go ahead and pick that certificate that I just deployed. And all set there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, enable uh, SSL VPN on our default group. Now, creating custom groups is out of scope for this video, but I uh, wanted to get that going here. Um, one more thing we need to do. We need to enable IPsec IKE v1 on our inside interface, and this is only used because I've con when we configure load balancing later, uh, as you'll see, uh, it's going to require secure connectivity between the the ASA head ends, and they actually build an IPsec tunnel between them and the inside interface. So I need to enable uh, IPsec on that interface. We're going to configure a basic uh, split tunnel configuration now just to get something going here with local authentication. So I'm going to edit my default web VPN group, and this is the one that my AnyConnect clients by default will connect in. Um, 
as you can see, we're, we're just using a local authentication here. That means a username and password that's been configured on this ASA. In production, of course, you would almost always configure a RADIUS or LDAP, Active Directory Server, or something like that. Uh, so uh, we need to configure our DNS servers for this. This is my internal DNS servers. And uh, that'll be it for now. The uh, rest of the default settings will be fine. And go ahead and apply that. And now I need to configure some basics in my group policy. Now, I uh, often get questions around the group policy. The group policy gets applied after you connect, and you can have different settings uh, for your group policy based upon who the user is, etc. We're going to basic configuration here, and I'm assigning that, that VPN pool IP address range uh, that we created to this group policy. And then we're going to go ahead and configure our split tunneling. So I'm not going to worry about IPv6 uh, for now. So I'm going to tell it for my IPv4 to uh, tunnel the list below, which you need to create. And I'll call that my tunnel list. And just add my internal subnet in there. OK. All right, that's added. And we're good to go. Go ahead and apply that. OK, at this point, you've completed all of the necessary configuration for a basic AnyConnect remote access VPN configuration with split tunneling. So at this point, if you were to point your web browser or the AnyConnect client directly at whatever DNS name you've given to this ASA, you would connect and put in your local credentials and you'd be authenticated. Of course, you would want a DNS entry configured that matches the certificate that we installed on this ASA.